one reaction. Well, leave and welcome to my YouTube series, first YouTube video. I'm very excited, and today it is September 21st, and we're, be we're going to be going through the sports world right now. We've got a lot of sports to cover. we got the NFL, MLB, NBA, NHL, college football, a lot of exciting things happening in the sports world. And today we're going to cover NFL, NFC teams. We're going to rank them in the tiers. I got my tiers laid out. We got our leaders, questions, but I've shown the ability to be elite, uh, retooling, but not rebuilding, and then the rebuild teams. And then in the NBA, we'll go over the series. MLB, not too much this week. NHL, we'll go over the Stanley Cup. And then in the uh, football world, the college football world, we're going to go over the ACC Big 12 and preview the SEC season. So a lot to get to. Let's dive right in. Let's start in the NFC, in the NFL, and let's start with our leaders. We got three teams as our leaders in the NFC. So we got the Packers, Saints, Seahawks. Top three teams, no particular order. You got Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, all lead quarterbacks, all with pieces around them. Uh, Rodgers has got Adams, uh, Wilson's got Metcalf and Lockett, and New Orleans, they've got a bunch of guys, Thomas, Kamara, a lot of dudes. They all have questions. You got, can the run defense and lack of a number two wide receiver hurt Aaron Rodgers? You got, can Bree stay healthy and be elite and be that guy that can uh, create as a quarterback? Because we haven't seen that in two years. And he hasn't done that in the playoffs. So can he be that guy? And can the lines, offense and defensive line, hold up in Seattle? Can Pete Carroll give Russell Wilson the keys? He's done it so far this year. Can that continue as we get towards the playoffs? So those are my three elite teams in the NFC. There's no super elite team. I still think the AFC has the two top teams in football in Kansas City and, L uh, Kansas City and Baltimore. But these are the next three. These are the next three gap teams. Green Bay, New Orleans, Seattle. Next, we got questions, but have the shown the ability to be lead. So they're about one step, or maybe they solve my questions. You got LA, the Rams, you got the Arizona Cardinals, San Francisco 49ers, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Again, no particular order within the tiers. The tiers have the order, obviously. So you got the Rams, they're they're two and oh. They look very good, but can I trust this O-line? Can I trust this defense? I'm not sure yet. They played the Eagles and Cowboys, so we'll take that with a grain of salt. Arizona, can this defense hold up? Kyler Murray's been absolutely fantastic this year. Can that continue as we get to tougher games? They've played Washington, okay? They've played Washington. They great D-line, but they've played Washington, okay? And a banged-up San Francisco team. Uh, next, San Francisco, they're banged up. That, they should be in that elite category, but they're banged up. And can we trust Jimmy G? I mean, he's out now, but when he comes back, can we trust him? There were already trust issues in San Francisco. Next, Tampa Bay. They'll figure it out. I think in a month, we'll be saying they're a leader category. Yeah. I think they'll definitely figure it out in Tampa Bay. Give Brady a month. He'll figure it out. Retooling, not rebuilding. So we got Cowboys, Eagles, Bears, Vikings, Falcons. A couple of these teams, the Cowboys and Eagles, we had higher expectations for, obviously. But they just don't look that good. Bears, don't trust Tubisky. They got no shot in my book. Vikings, Cousins, and Zimmer. It's not working. I don't see it, and that defense is weaker this year. It's evident, and Falcons just don't have a defense. And Matt Ryan just, like, he, he looks great. This offense looks great, but come on, Falcons. Really? Really? Can't win? Can't win in Dallas? You're up 39-24? Really? No defense. Rebuilds. Giants. Redskins. Lions. Panthers. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Giants don't have a defense yet to compete and don't have an offensive line. Washington football team encouraging front seven they don't have the offense yet lions there's just a lot of problems with detroit always stafford still making terrible throws that defense still stinks especially that secondary carolina um th they've got a lot of pieces i like matt rule at home I, I really like him but i think they're that defense is still maturing so we'll see what goes on in carolina mlb so we're done with the nfl for this week we'll go to the afc next week uh, MLB playoffs later this uh, next week. Super excited. Let's go Yankees. That's all I got for you on the MLB front. And NBA. We got the Lakers and Nuggets. Uh, what a series so far. AD, what a shot. I mean, he became that dog everyone wanted him to be. Tail of two halves. Denver looked much better in the second. I mean, does that, doesn't that that always happen? Jokic and Murray, they will not go away quietly. Jokic 
Yeah, he's not going away. Uh, Rondo, difference right now. He, he was the difference in the first half. He, he can control a game when he wants to. Definitely play up Rondo. You saw him in New Orleans. You saw him in Boston. Now you're seeing him in LA do stuff. In the playoffs, he is a really good point guard. Really good. And he controlled the game last night in the first half especially. Uh, Mike Malone, why are we keeping in P.J. Dozier? I didn't like that. He, he actually missed. He was one for five from the free throw line. They lost by two. I lost by three, excuse me. They lost by three. Got to make your free throws. Dozier didn't. That's why they lost. That could be one of the reasons. On an 80 lucky shot, Dozier makes those free throws. That game's put away before. Uh, great Grant's been great defensively, who I like. Jokic figured out Howard a little bit. I think uh, Denver can definitely win a couple games. I mean, Jokic, if he can figure himself out, he started to do that. They should have won game two. If you get a nice shooting night from Murray, you never know at Denver. I like the Lakers to win, but in six. So I like uh, Denver to extend the series a little bit. They got too much talent to go away quietly. Heat Celtics. Uh, Celtics just match up well. You saw it in game three. Tatum, if he can play like the best player on the floor, you get Kemba. The size issue for the Celtics, that's not an issue, really, with Adebayo as the tallest guy on the floor for the Heat at 6'8". Hayward coming back is huge because he can bring IQ against the zone, which killed them in game two, and Hayward can contribute on the offensive end. Marcus Smart's been shooting out of his mind, which hopefully that can hold up. I mean, Heat need to continue to do what they've been doing, keep it close, rely on that great shooting. Shooting, I think Boston's very, uh, too talented right now. I don't think they go away easily. They, they won game three. I think it definitely goes to six or seven. And I'm going to take Miami because I, I, I just trust them more. I trust those players more. They've shown up more. But I think Boston's definitely got a shot. I'm going to take Miami in seven on the book. So Miami in seven, but I think this game can go, uh, this series can go either way. Two really good basketball teams that will have trouble against uh, LA once LA gets there. NHL, Lightning Stars, game one, Stars dominate behind that uh, defense and then that offense. They created a lot of chances. Ben and Sagan controlled the game. Corey Perry was really good. They're just, they're just a scrappy hockey team that can know, knows how to play. I mean, they really need to do. They really do a really nice job. Lightning just need to generate more chances. They Vaskalevsky usually never faces as many shots as, as his opponent goaltender, and he faced more. It, it was remarkable what the Stars can do, and they have the ability to do that, but I think the Lightning should be okay. I like them to win in six. Too much talent for the Lightning. Braided Point, Nikita Kucherov, just too much. I think Lightning figure it out. Victor Hedman defensively, they'll figure it out. Lightning win in six. Let's move to college football to end off our uh, first YouTube video. We'll start in the ACC and this ACC team. Oh, wow. They got some dudes in this ACC. You got Clemson still looking dominant with Trevor Lawrence, obviously. Miami, let's look at this team. Manny Diaz has done a great job. Derek King, he's awesome. This offense looks nothing like it was last year. It's electric. It's got skill players, and they can do it. If that O-line can hold up, they've hold up, held up so far in the first two games, and that defense is still really good. I mean, you saw against Louisville. Louisville was a great offense last year with Cunningham. They shut him down, basically. ND, I mean, Notre Dame coming into the league. They impressed as well. Ian Book, balanced offense, great defense. Yes, they played South Florida, but a really nice performance for Notre Dame here in the first two weeks. And did we forget about UNC? I mean, this is the team that everyone was uh, marking down from, from like a year ago. You got Howell and Brown at that quarterback coach. They they got they got skill players and Williams and Carner and Brown on the outside. I mean, they all had big games against Cuse. They're there, and their defense only let up six points. So again, you got four elite teams in the ACC right now. That, that's very impressive. And you got Virginia Tech, Pittsburgh, and Louisville all also ranked. I get it; they're the only conference that's played so far. But you gotta like what you're seeing. If you're Clemson, that gives you a little bit of a boost. If you can go through the ACC, you can get that one seed like you couldn't get last year. They got the talent in the ACC this year. Big 12, we'll see more this week, but Oklahoma and Texas are the teams to beat. Oklahoma State, that was a scare against Tulsa. They lost their quarterback, but they've got an improved defense, and they always have dangerous weapons in Trevor Hubbard and Wallace. Spencer Sanders is a special player. He needs to be back if Oklahoma State wants to stay in that playoff conversation. SEC, We'll see this week for the first time, SEC on CBS. It's Mississippi State and LSU. Questions I got for all the elite teams. Ed O, how do you respond after having one of the best teams in the country and maybe even ever last year? How will Brennan do at quarterback? No Jamar Chase? No problem for Brennan. That's going to be very tough. Bama and Georgia look to be elite again. How will they do with new quarterbacks? Florida is five with 
a returning quarterback, and that defense, Kyle Trask, should be great again this year. They get the only returning quarterback. So Florida has a leg up on these teams. They don't have to implement that new uh, quarterback. They got Kyle Trask. How does he play here in a second year? How do they respond? They've got an uh, early test at Ole Miss. So we'll see how they do there. Auburn, they look good again at number eight. They've got another returning quarterback. We'll see how they hold up as well. Texas A&M, Tennessee, and Kentucky are the others ranked. Kentucky goes to Auburn, so we'll see them early. Big Ten, I'm excited. I, we will dive deeper later, but yeah, mm -hmm. they, they might play. It's exciting. So don't want to get overhyped about that. What a week of sports we've got tonight. We've got Monday Night Football Saints Raiders. That's a good game. Big three might come out later. And then we got Stars Lightning. We've got NBA going Tuesday, Wednesday. So uh, Boston, Miami off to Wednesday. NHL will continue throughout the week. MLB last week of the year. Go Yankees. And NFL will continue Thursday night. Dolphins, Jaguars. And then we got a great, great week ahead. Chiefs, Ravens, Monday night. Packers, Saints, Sunday night. And then we got the Cowboys, Seahawks, 425 on Fox. What a week we've got coming to you guys. Great week of sports. We'll see you guys in a couple days.